everybody, I'm back. Stacey Rossetti here, and I wanted to introduce another super totally awesome uh, woman investor. Uh, go ahead, Christy, and introduce yourself. Hi, guys. My name is Christy Duckett Harris. Um, I am an investor. I invest in all facets of the business. Um, one of my main focuses is mobile homes, but we do do single family, passive income, everything you know that Stacy teaches about, pretty much. So, tell, how long have you been investing for? Um, since 2007. So now that sounds like a really long time. <laughs> yeah, 13 years. Um, and definitely started out in the rehabs and then soon learned there was so much more to real estate. So I've kind of diversified and now we predominantly focus a lot on passive income. Oh, you do? Good. Okay, awesome. So tell me a little bit about uh, like, what are the fav- what are your favorite types of things that y'all invest in? Oh, that's a great question. So I love mobile homes. I'm in South Carolina. Um, so we have to love them because they're everywhere and it's affordable housing. So that's been kind of a niche that we tapped into, but I'm really loving like right now, just the way the market is. I mean, obviously everyone knows this, it's competitive. It all comes down to marketing. Um, everyone's rehabbing. So we've just been really focusing on short-term rentals and finding, you know, landlords that want to get rid of their property and how can we maximize that and really increase the rents. So that's kind of been our bread and butter for really the last, um, you know, nine months we've been through this COVID just kind of working differently. That's a good question. How did you like, how did you pivot when, when all, you know, when everything broke loose? This is like great, right? Because we all know what happened um, back in the market in 2007 and eight. So when all of us, and I was investing then. So when COVID came, I thought, oh boy, wait a minute. This is a different circumstance, but like what's going to happen? So I was ultra prepared for anything. Um, And we had three rehabs going on and we had our short-term Airbnb rentals and we had our longer-term rentals. So, you know, you start watching the news, which is the worst thing to do. And it's like, oh, wow, panic mode. I'm like, okay, let's not get into that. Let's think logically. So I noticed my short-term rentals were quickly canceling. Like everybody canceled up until July. And I thought, okay, this is going to be dried up for a couple months. Let me pivot because, you know, I've got these properties. I've got to figure out something. Mm -hmm. I really didn't want to put long-term tenants in them because I knew things would kind of change over the course of the months. So I actually started focusing predominantly on business travelers and um, traveling nurses. So as I was able to take my properties very quickly, get them filled and actually produce just as much, if not more money in some cases, which was really cool to see. I I love that. I started stocking up on supplies because that was my initial thought. Like who knows, you know, everything's coming from different areas is everything going to kind of die, you know, down and we're not going to be able to find stuff. So I just thought proactively, I have a storage unit. I just bought stuff and stored it in there and kept moving. (laughs) Did you use any coupons to get those? Yes, absolutely. (laughs) You're one of those people with the coupons and then like their closets full of like all the stuff or whatever. (laughs) So true. Oh my gosh. It was, it was crazy. And, you know, and soon enough, I realized everyone's panicking what's going on, but you know, like everything, it's like the instant panic. And then it's like, okay, guys, like let's refocus. And I think because maybe of the market before in 2000, you know, seven and eight, I learned to survive through that and pivot. So I knew this was just going to be something else. Like always, there's always something going on. I mean, that's the real estate market anyways. I mean, you know, it's just up and down and you just kind of have to go with the flow, right? This is something that you're good at. I think it's just going with the flow. Right. And I think, you know, that's part of, we talk a lot about being a woman and being a mom. Like you really have to learn, you know, you cannot be type A so much anymore. You got to just roll with it. So I think real estate is the same. (laughs) Exactly. So, so do you guys Airbnb your, like your mobile homes or do y'all do that like for other properties? Yeah. So we haven't, but I've been looking. So You know, a lot of our Airbnbs are in, I live in Columbia, South Carolina, and I love our market because, you know, we have the college, um, we have the military base, we have the government here. So we have a lot of main staples and I always look at like, what's your main thing coming in? Like actually big news. I laugh because Charleston has um, Boeing, Greenville has BMW, and we're getting the White Claw facility for the spritzer drinks. (laughs) But that's awesome. money, right? No, you know, so I'm like, oh, this is going to bring a lot of jobs. So I start targeting, of course, those areas as everyone, like where are things coming in? You know, who will be coming in? So the mobile homes, um, I don't Airbnb them, but we have been trying to look around the lake for one, because that would be great. And then downtown, they've eased up in one area where they're actually building um, tiny homes, about eight to 10. And I can't believe it off downtown. I'm shocked they're letting it happen here. But that just shows me like, okay, this is something we could do with the mobile homes as well. 
Awesome. I love that. So y'all focus solely on like with the mobile homes, you're buying just one off. So you're not buying like parks, right? I bought parks in the past, but I found um, those were at a distance. So obviously like everything, you need good management or people in place. Um, So I'm not opposed to buying a park, but if I was now, I'll tell you what changes my strategy. Instead of owning all the homes, which I did in the past, which requires maintenance, people on site and Mm -hmm. a lot of things on, I would just buy a park with only the lot rents. So people own their own homes, they pay you on the land, and then you have a lot less headache. And I think if you truly want to be passive and hands off, that's one of your best ways to go with the mobile home parks. Well, that's a good tip. So just in case anybody's interested in the mobile homes. Right. All right, cool. Talk about some, talk about some of the, like the, uh, the last couple of deals that you've done. Yeah. So, um, it's cool. So one of like our best deals, I was trying to think we've done a lot and you kind of forget. So there's one, I think that was the most gratifying and it was financially great too, but we flipped a house five years ago. It was probably the best deal we'd done for like just personal gain and benefit of like feeling good. Mm -hmm. We flipped a house five years ago and there was a couple that just contacted us during COVID. It was literally like the beginning of April. They wanted to sell. She said, you flipped my best friend's house five years ago and we're selling to you. Like she was like, we're going to list it. We want to sell you Um, the house. I said, well, great. You know, we went and met her husband and they were the second owner of the house Ironically, I found out by posting on Facebook when we bought it, I actually knew the first owner's parents. So we, everybody that had lived in that house, ironically. So we ended up buying um, the house from them and literally gave them a great offer that worked for them. It worked for us. And we brought um, her husband and her back after. And it was amazing. We filmed it. She was in tears. I've never seen someone so excited And it was such a good, like this, a reminder of why we do the business, because you know, everything's not perfect every day, Mm -hmm. but it really solidified. Like when you do things right, it pays off and it feels good. I love that. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what we're supposed to be doing is just really solving the problems of of whoever we speak to. Absolutely. And sometimes we get caught up in everything and forget about that and the stress of getting everything done. And it's really just nice to take a moment back. And we ended up selling it to another family that I assume will probably be there the same amount of time, which was a cool feeling to see, like they're going to raise their kids too. So we love that. Um, and it was funny because when she came in, she goes, she looks at her husband. She goes, these are all the things I ever wanted to do to this house. They did it. <laughs> so he laughed like not my business. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So real fast too, you also, so you work with your husband, right? With this. So kind of, how does that work together? So, you know, <laughs> Like everything, there's stress in the night because you know, right? You work with your husband. It's like, when do you cut this off? Like, we yeah. really have to stop talking about this. Yes, yes, yes. I think it's really just balancing time and also like having your roles in the business very um, solidified. Like, you know what you're in charge of. I know what I'm in charge of. So I'm not going to wife nag you to get things done, like taking out the trash. This is our business and it gets done. And I think we've done a great job of like splitting the roles and staying in our lane. And that works really well, but we love it. I mean, I think it really hit home as I was telling you with COVID because I had um, my oldest son started, was supposed to start kindergarten this year. And because of us doing this full time, we were able to keep him home, be with him. And I love it. It's great. You know, he comes out to properties. He's also learning, you know, his sight words and reading. So it's a, it's a really cool experience. I see that when following you guys. So they're always like doing something with the real estate and then studying and then doing work and stuff, which is awesome. I love that. Got to incorporate. You got to incorporate, right? You know, like they know this business, they're going to be around it. Maybe they'll, hopefully they'll love it later. I don't know. Maybe they won't, but at least they know what kind of what we do. Right. (laughs) That's like us. Like we said, we used to take, we used to take Lillian to like our rehabs and I'd be like, okay, Lillian, walk around the house. We're going to do a video and you tell everybody what's going on in this house. And they're better than you. I mean, they know and they can spot things wrong and they start to point out things. I'm like, okay, guys, we're trying to sell this house. Stop talking. I know. I know. I take, I take Lillian to my storage facilities and she's always like I'm bored (laughs) I'm like well remember those fun trips like you guys traveling cross country that's what makes it happen (laughs) that's awesome that's awesome so how do you like how do you and your husband kind of break up everything so what does he do and what do you do so I found, and, and I laugh because I think this comes with a lot of women, like in, in it, like in your household, you grow up, like a lot of times your mom is like managing stuff, even though your dad might be doing other stuff. She's the one that kind of is like, let's get this running. So I found that project managing, I love. And 
that is like my favorite part of the business, working with the guys. Um, and I have all men that work for us. And That's awesome. Oh, it's such a great relation. My husband has no interest. He's like, please do not send me on the job site. I don't want to talk to anyone. Like, That's awesome. So he's able to do the um, more of the acquisition side. So like anything dealing with the, the money to be raised, the private money, um, going to the attorneys before closing, getting everything lined up with all of the documents to secure, making sure everything runs smooth. And then I run the back end of running the numbers, you know, um, getting the bids, all of that. And then when it comes to marketing on the back end, he's great at marketing. So that's his wheelhouse. So it really, I always tell everyone, focus on your strengths. If you don't like things, don't do them. Like, why are you doing the things you hate? Like you could work a job and do that. Well, and what I know, what I see here, what I hear also is that like, you know, you have like marketing and acquisitions and finance, but essentially like if one person really likes to do this and it's right, kind of in the same department, it's like, it doesn't matter how you split it up really. Right. Exactly. And it's like, you know, I've, I've worked in corporate America. That's what I did before. And I just want to literally wake up when I want to wake up. I want to do what I want to do and like plan my day, how I want to plan. So for me, the real estate has allowed us to do that, you know, and it's and during COVID, it's really shown me, wow, this is a sustainable business. I don't know what else out there is currently, to be honest, but that's healthcare, maybe. Yeah, I really love that. I'm so grateful that I'm in real estate, honestly, because all during COVID, we were fine. Yeah, you didn't even think twice. It was almost like not even something was weird. You were just yeah. going about your life. I know. I love that. I'm so grateful for that. Um, so also what I was going to ask is how do you guys do your, like, how do you find your properties? Do y'all do like direct mail or what do y'all do? So, you know, I literally was talking to someone the other day and, you know, everyone says right now, oh, the MLS is the most competitive. You can't find anything. I mean, you you hear that all the time. Like, yeah, even- yeah. COVID's not going on. So I looked, you know, and over the years we have done direct mail, we've done internet marketing. Interesting enough this year. So we have done seven deals. Um, five were rehabs um, and two were passive income. And let's see, the one was a referral and the other five of those we found on the MLS. They were actually on the MLS. So I've found a way to target and I'll talk about that a little bit. And then the other one was on Zillow for sale by owner. So literally when you look at marketing dollars I put in, it was none. It was literally in my mouth, like talking to agents and building relationships. Mm-hmm. And I actually love that because I feel like when the good deals come, they know that you can get them done and they yeah. know to close on them. And agents don't want to waste their time. They're busy right now. I love that. So you've built up a really solid reputation in the area as well, too. Like just, did you know, just show me the deal and I'll get it done. Absolutely. And, and, you know, anyone loves that. Who wants to hem and haul with someone that just drags and wastes their time? None of us want to do that. And I feel like just transparency and being upfront with people, like, I want to help you make money. I want to make money too. Like, how can we work together? And what's interesting is every deal that we found. So like off the MLS was listed way higher than what we got it for. Um, But it was just coming in and really negotiating it down. But my newest strategy, and we have a house under contract now, we're hoping it's a duplex. I'm hoping to get it down a good amount. Um, I've already gotten it down $25,000 off the list price. Um, And we just had the inspection. But I'm targeting properties that have tenants in them currently. Because you know as well as I, investors don't want those. But what I do is I go in and say, listen, I want to buy this property. So here's my price, but I want the tenants out. So, you know, I'm willing to give you this, but like you have to get them out. I don't care if it takes 60 days, 90 days, I'll keep extending and I'll get it done, but you need to get them out. And if you can't get them out, then I need a significant discount. And I'm finding right now because of all the COVID buzz and tenants not paying. And I don't think, and honestly, I own a property management company. And all my tenants are paying. We haven't had an issue with anyone. But I think it's just the fear factor. People are really going, what's going to happen? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of my target um, landlords are baby boomers. So a lot of them own their properties free and clear. And they're just like, we don't want to deal with this. We're done. Like, we're, we want to give it to someone younger. We've made our money. Let's move on. That's awesome. I love that. So essentially, you, you're you looking on the MLS for houses that have tenants in them that are being sold is what it is. Yeah. Which is, Are you in like a certain price range or is it just like whatever? Okay. So I am targeting certain areas. So um, going back to like the travel nurse aspect, I found like, wow, this can be super lucrative. And we have like six hospitals around us. So there's people coming in and out all the time. So I currently have two travel nurses that came in on three month assignments and they've extended till six. Awesome. 
Yeah. And I mean, I could rent. So like to give you like a numbers idea, um, if I were to rent that the one, I have a little condo that I bought like very cheap. Um, and it's not a, the best school district. That's what's funny about some of these properties. Like they might not appreciate 500 grand, but they're going to appreciate. But I don't care about the school districts. These are people coming into work. Is it a safe environment? Is it location? You know, is it located near stuff? Great. So once I kind of get that criteria, um, I'm able to negotiate because those properties sometimes are sitting because homeowners don't want them because they're not the best school district. So the condo I could probably rent for ten fifty, maybe eleven hundred a month, but I'm able to rent it up to sixteen hundred a month, and have someone that's working all the time that's never there. I love it. That's yeah. Those are the best. Those are the best tenants too. <laughs> they are oh my gosh, the best tenants. And it's funny because um, when I found a property. This was like another interesting story for a passive income. I've also started looking on the MLS for properties kind of mislabeled by agents. So there was a house that they had listed and it's, it's in a good zip code, but again, it's one road over from the best school district and it's a predominantly rental area. So a lot of people think of that area like, oh, it's not a good area, but this house is actually in a great spot and it's a 2,100 square foot house and it had two individual units on it, an 1,800 square or 800 square foot and a 900 square foot unit. So three streams of income, one tax parcel. And I saw it and I was like, you know, that's just weird. It says live in the house and produce income. And I'm like, what? I don't even understand what that means. And the agent was an older agent. So I think he just got the listing because he, it was a probate, you know, someone had passed away. Yeah. yeah. And I called and I went and looked at the house. The house had been completely redone. The kids have redone it. I went in the two other units. I mean, they were fine to rent, but I thought, let me jazz them up and make them cute. We ended up, that thing was listed for 175. Um, we got it for 135, needed like 10 grand worth of staging, you know, and just fresh paint. We rent the main house for 1050 a month um, to a full-time tenant. We rent the middle unit to a travel nurse for 1075. And we rent the third unit to a college student who locked in for two years um, at $900. So we're producing after mortgage taxes, everything paid out 1500 bucks a month on that one property. That is amazing. I love that. And you found that right on the MLS. Right on the MLS. You want to hear what's really crazy? What? Brian is an agent. I was telling him, I bought this property and he goes, do you know Road? He's like, I listed that thing back in 2008. Those people have been trying to sell that thing since 2008. I'm like, what? Yes. And I think it was just a home. The way the agent had it marketed was buy the home. Well, most people can't get financed in that neighborhood and they're not the people that can are not going to buy. So it was literally just a fluke. I stumbled across it. How do you, how do you finance all your properties? Great question. So most of them um, I'm buying through private money um, because I built a good resource of lenders. And then I'm going in and cash out refinance. Um, some I'm using now small banks locally. We just met with one two weeks ago that we're working on a property, but I've also used non-traditional lenders, um, such as Lima one, um, Vizio financial. Now their interest rates a little higher, but on that property, it still worked because I had three streams of income. You know, and that's what I always tell my students is like, look, I get that it's higher interest rates, but just get a deal done and get started. You have to get over that. You got to get over that. Right? I, I agree. And and it will always produce and does amazing. And it's like, you know, you got to give up something to get something. Sometimes you're not going to get a 3% interest rate, right? Or tie up your own money, then what, you know, so you have to really think creatively. What are you going to, what are you going to focus on for 2021? How do you see the market and stuff? That's a great question, right? So I know like everyone's saying, which I agree with, there's going to be a lot of more short sales. Unfortunately, people losing their homes because of the forbearance. Um, those are all going to be coming due. And I mean, I've met people personally that have not paid a mortgage payment since April and now have probably eaten up a good amount of their equity. Um, so, you know, the COVID thing is like, are we going to shut back down? Or are we going to stay open? I don't know, right? <laughs> And it really makes you go like, okay, interest rates are low. I think rehabbing will still be very good. Um, but, you know, I still stay conservative. I will not jump in our area. The median price point is about 225 now, and it's jumped up quite a bit. And that's unusual for our market. It's never really been like this. Mm -hmm. I'm still staying pretty conservative on my rehabs. I'm staying at the median price point or below. I'm not going for the six, $700,000 home run every time. You know, it just, to me... Even if the market is a slow shift, I feel like just play it safe. 
worst case, I can turn the house into a rental if I had to. I go, and that's, I mean, that's exactly it. And essentially you're saying is it's all about affordable housing. And I hear this over and over again, and you're right in that market. And essentially if you focus on 200,000 or less, that that house could sell immediately. It will sell immediately. immediately. And you know, as well as I, Stacey, like different strategies, worst case scenario, do I, what if I had to lease option that house to someone to buy it? Or what if I had to move on something? Because all my, my lenders are private money that I've worked in for years. So if I need to change up things or renegotiate interest rates, they'll do it because I've made them a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just, you know, with working with them, it's very flexible. Um, but, you know, I, I try to Think about more of the passive income and the guaranteed. You know, I, a lot of people buy their passive income. Oh, I'm going to Airbnb this and that's all I'm going to do or I'm going to buy a vacation rental. And you have to first and foremost, look at your rentals as I can float this with a long-term tenant and whatever else is above and beyond is great. But let me make sure that I can cover that because if you don't, you will get yourself in trouble. And I think that's should- Mm-hmm. That's exactly true. Exactly. You need to have a plan B basically is what you're saying. Yes, absolutely. But mm-hmm. still continuing the mobile homes, like I love them. I think they're such an easy, affordable, you know, I'm open to any investing. I really don't say this is all I do. I also try not to be all over the place because you know, as well as I, you can really spread yourself thin. Um, but yeah, just buying more properties, helping more people um, and kind of moving on in that direction. So do you have any like final tips or tricks for uh, any of the, uh, anybody listening right now? Yeah, good question. I think like, here's the thing. Mindset is everything. And you know this, I know you're big on mindset. Um, You know, whatever you think you can do, you can. Not even if it's real estate, it's whatever. If you want to lose a hundred pounds, you can. Like my esthetician just lost 38 pounds since July because she committed to doing it. You know what she did? She walked a mile every day and she ate well. She didn't do any fancy tricks or, you know, this, this gimmick. She really just put her mind to it. And I think your mind is so powerful. And so many times we work against ourselves. I think you just need to tell yourself, I can do this. I'm capable and I'm going to make it happen. Whatever that is. I love it. That's, ex- that's, that's what everybody needs to hear. I love that. Isn't that what you teach Lillian? Don't you tell her like you can do anything. I mean, I tell my boys all the time. I really believe that you can be anything you want to be. Um, And I think just reinforcing that to them is so important when they're little because they will grow up with an attitude of knowing whatever it is, I know I can do it. And I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's what we do as well, too. Yes. I'm excited about your kids growing up and I'm excited about what they're going to become. And uh, yeah, and and even Lillian as well, too. Like, you know, just being in this world and being able to think the way that we're thinking, it's going to be amazing for them. It really is. And just being a good, kind person and like really teaching and educating and helping. Like, it's so cool to see. It's like this whole generation that I don't know if it's ever been this way. I think it's going to be awesome. And I just that to like parents being a little bit older, right? You and myself and just not focusing on the stuff that's really not important. It's like really just live in the moment. Like I've really learned that with the boys because it truly does go so fast. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff out of this. So, all right, awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Christy, for hanging out. And I will see everybody at the next video.